um, I'm, I myself am quite a social person, but then I need a lot of room for myself. So if I imagine myself to, to be fenced in on a tour bus for a couple of weeks, I would run mad because I need a couple of hours a day for myself. Uh, I don't know if there's someone among yours who is about the same, but how do you cope with, with the need of uh, like seeing other people for a couple of minutes a day or a couple of hours perhaps? or getting out of the group before it gets too tense, not because there are aggressions or anything, just because you feel that need to, to be on your own when you can't. I mean, I think I'm usually the one that always goes running off doing things. <laughs> For probably part of the reason is that, is that I quite you know, enjoy my own company. I enjoy being around people, obviously, but I like to have some alone time every day. Back home I have two dogs, which I walk for an hour every day, which gives me complete peace and quiet and I leave my cell phone at home just you know, to be able to process the day and you know, relax yeah. a bit. So I usually, I'm also very curious when I travel and when you get the opportunity to go from city to city to city, I really enjoy trying to convince maybe one of the guys to come with me and go to museums or walk around. You know, so you're the tourist. Or, <laughs> you always go to <laughs> That's not true. I, I rarely go alone. There's always one, one sucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's never me. <laughs> it's never That's true. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's but very it's tiring, and then you have, of course, the shows at night, and maybe your day rhythm in normal life is totally different. You have to cope with this, too. Like. It's right. a bit like I, I don't have much interest in museums. I would never be able to get to a theater into a comic book shop or, a, or a, you know, a, <laughs> looking at CDs and vinyls for two hours straight. So, uh, so it's different uh, interests, that's just how it is. It's hard for you to find these shops anymore. Yeah, they don't even exist anymore, <laughs> but I'm just sitting in the bus, yeah. like, watching movies or something. No, but I mean, it's, if, when you're on tour like this, you end up in the, you get daily routines. You have the, you know, the load in, set up, sound check, show, merch sales, load out, going to the hostel. And somehow, if, it, if you explain it to someone and how long the days are, etc., it always sounds crazy, but you, you end up in the rhythm where I think your body copes with it after a day or two and everything just rolls around along. You get really good at relaxing when you have time to relax and wait and getting fo being focused when you're supposed to be focused and uh, I find that very enjoyable and I love being on tour like this. Yeah, it's, it's the same with this isolation thing. I have a, a very, very strong desire to isolate myself and not be among people, especially people I don't know. But uh, on tour, it, you go into tour mode, or at least yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm not particularly fond of meeting new people on tour either, so I, I have a really, really strong desire to stay backstage and stay for myself. But being together with the guys that I know and I'm familiar with and I'm comfortable with, I can be with them every hour of the day and it doesn't bother me at all. So it's very strange, it's kind of like a shift. Um, I don't feel that need when it's people I'm comfortable with. My interviews end always in one or two odd questions. And my question now would be, um, imagine the god Thor. Mm -hmm. He is Just on the car on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He is in, in his smithery, and he is processing his new sword, and he's hammering and hammering and hammering. And one of these hammer strikes is loud, producing a louder sound than ever and some kind of smoke is rising and he's dizzling away. So when he wakes up, there is this uh, freaky guy, quite tinted, dark hair, weird beard, and this skirty thing he's wearing, like white, half-long skirty thing, and he's putting two coins on his eyes. What happened and what's going to happen next? Uh, I'm just thinking about that one. Yeah, I know the tour bus answer and I know the, <laughs> the safe <laughs> internet answer. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously this sounds like uh, sounds like Karen or something. Karen is preparing him to go. But how did he come there? That's a good question. Is that a riddle or something? Or just no, something? no, no, it's just a, a story, a okay. situation. Make up your own story from it. It's a very interesting, weird setup. 
What's the turbo sensor then? That's not going on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> him up and then he pay, he's paying him with two coins afterwards. That's a bit, is that a turbo sensor? I don't know. Apparently not. No, no. I don't probably, know that was probably worse. Than, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's really strange. Yeah, yeah sorry, role player. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Okay. They uh, always come up with this freaky stuff. It's, yeah. Obviously, that's, that would be my, my version. Cool. Yeah.